teammate in helping everybody around him get better. Orange and blue game. The quarterbacks are in white, and we got some trickeration. Kadarius Tony opening things up. The Franks wide open. Nice grab. And just like that, didn't take long to get the tricks out of his opportunity to compete for more playing time this year. So third and long for Franks. First situation for this orange offense with third and long. A wide open touchdown in the corner. Kadarius Tony. They start the drive with Tony finding Franks, and then Franks finds Tony in the end zone. Sent to his team after that press conference because this team never looked back. Yet to lose since that since that postgame speech, and we see Kyle Trask leading on the uh, blue team. But I bring up. He'll keep it. Oh, picked off. Wide open. And there goes John Huggins. Plenty of real estate. Touchdown, Gators. The orange team on the board with two quick touchdowns. 40 yards down the field. What we want to see is a guy that knows when to take those shots and can come back and check down when it's not there, just like you saw right there. Didn't force the football downfield. Covered the same fact. who really plays to the highest level. This blue team boasting a Nick Buchanan, Christopher Bleich, and Brett Hagee there, the center and two guards that will protect Felipe Franks this upcoming season. There is Jones, and there's his legs moving. Taking advantage of that white jersey going down the field. Right, well, I don't know that Huggins would have a teacher, a stabilizing factor for this Florida defense. Wide open touchdown. Jones with the pass to Tyree Cleveland. And the blue team's on the board. Hammond, who's seemingly in his 10th year here at the University of Florida. So you got some guys that have played a lot of snaps and are ready to realize that potential that we've talked about for a long time. Frank's airing it out to Grimes wide up and down the sidelines. And just like that, touchdown for the Orange. One play. One score. It did interesting to really allowed him to feel much more confident. Davis, the fake, and then Trask across the middle to another big tight end, Kimari Gamble, who feels that uh, that he's overlooked. He said he's got a chip on his shoulder. A lot of people talking about Trask across the middle, wide open touchdown to Freddie Swain. <laughs> that punt made it into the upper deck there, Kev. Nice. We'll have to get our boy Johnny Townsend to give us a Mullen offense, but a guy that can tuck the football and run. We saw him against South Carolina lower the shoulder pads and run a guy over and route to a touchdown. I think he likes that added ability to run the football. To Darius Tony not giving up inside the 10 yard line on that reception. A lot of rack right there. He got from fans, from the media. Dan Mullen said he now only worries about what that room, that receiver, or quarterback room, where Brian Johnson, his coach, where Dan Mullen, his head coach, thinks about him. And I think that's freed him up to be a much more a positive guy as, as, as a whole and a much more prolific quarterback in general. And you can have fun in the end zone and play Duck Duck Goose after another touchdown pass. The second quarter, Jones back on the field. Going deep to the right side to a wide open wide receiver. And that is Kimari Gamble. Gamble trying to make an impression. Looking good so far, the sophomore from Miami. Experienced seniors, and now we're seeing the potential shine here on a drive like this. Gamble, two catches, 65 yards so far. Jones, oh, and he's picked off. That is CJ McWilliams. So the secondary gets one back. But I've seen those guys. They've really taken big steps, especially young players that haven't been in this situation before. The opportunity to take these big steps and move forward and grow uh, has been huge. That connection that we just saw, Coach, it's been good today. What do you, what do you like about what Felipe's doing? Well, uh, you know, I think you look. He's a guy now the second year in the system. Played a whole season. In the spring and as you get into some of the fall camp practices. And when you have high schoolers that come in early, is it just coming down to teaching them the basics while they adjust? It, it, yeah. How about another nice throw over the middle of the field? Kyle Trask finding Freddie Swain wide open for the touchdown there. Guys running wide open in the secondary. Again, the benefit of some vanilla defenses. Todd Grantham not able to call a whole lot of the people on TV, and that is the NFL draft. Should be a special night in Nashville for round one. Oh, we got a pick on the field. Plenty of real estate for 
Number three, is that Lito oh. Shepard? Lito Shepard, the all-time great Florida defensive back there. That's probably the worst throw of the day for Felipe Franks, right? Those are right in the hands of, of Lito and able to go the distance. We've seen that once or twice before back in his day here as a Florida Gator. In 80 former Gators here this weekend for that game. That is a, an insanely large number, number compared to years in past. Why is it so important for you guys to come back and be a part of this? You know, it just helps with the overall program. Um, recruiting and just overall support, you know, all the... Yeah, you know it, too, the Gainesville native Chris Doring joining us yeah. here. And, and you, Felipe Franks and this offense, we had Grimes down the field. The great battle was Grimes, and he was working with against Trey Dean. The secondary of this group, C.J. Henderson, Marco Wilson, Brad Stewart, Trey Dean, the young and up-and-coming freshman, Chris Steele. I mean, obviously yesterday, he gives his strength staff one thing for them to focus on. After their workouts, every day they go in for 7 to 10 minutes and work on one skill, whether it's hitting the bag, whether it's their footwork, whether it's the punch. One thing for those guys to help continue to try to develop that's specifically prescribed for them to be able to blitz, and that's something that Trey Dean did really well right there coming off the slot, getting pressure on the quarterback. Dean saw a lot of time last year after the injury to Marco Wilson. Nice big hit down the field. Grantham talking about a year ago. It was kind of chaos trying to learn and teach. It's a quick learning curve. Pierce in between the tackles. The legs keep on moving. Guys, and Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, those are some big shoes they're going to have to fill. And that's why they bring in the transfer from Louisville, Jonathan Grenard, running that buck position. They get in the backfield now. Jabari Zuniga, Adam Schuler, Luke Ankrum. These are guys on that front. So the blue team down by 17. Trask with the pump fake, feeling a little bit of the pressure across the middle. Freddie Swain, the senior from McCalla, with the grab. Has some time, Trask. Left side. Finds a big tight end, Kyle Pitts. Kyle Trask, sophomore. Trask in the pocket, feeling the pressure across the middle, and it's deflected. Good defense there. Trask Nick Ulrich knocking it down, carry in the fourth quarter. That led the SEC. Back to the ground again, and there's Pierce. And he'll pick up the first down. So it's first and 10 for the Orange. Sproles trying to air it out. Hey! And it looks like it's going to be a big score. The hands are still there. Chris Doring. Yeah, don't, don't pull anything on that celebration. So... We'll At see least him. it had a little air on it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and we're grateful that he caught the football because if he didn't, I don't think he'd be invited back up here in the booth. One more look. It, it's not duck, duck, goose, and it's not a potential. When I say relearn football because he was a baseball pitcher, a lefty. And that looks like a touchdown for Tyree Cleveland. It is a touchdown. Holding on and Emery Jones with the connection. Number 18 coming in, the freshman from Richmond, Virginia. And it's the keeper for the quarterback on his first play. He'll go out of bounds. Nice run there from Jones. They're two, three, four years, and they know, you know, the in and outs of the offense. And um, I think it's really to our advantage that, you know, we have those guys that we can, uh, that I can look forward to throwing the ball to. And um, those guys are, you know, tremendous workers, and they come to work there and game plan for Miami. But, you know, until that time comes, we just kind of focus on our technical stuff right now. Getting each, you know, each player just getting better each and every day. And uh, I think that's what the main focus is, is, you know, throughout throughout each phase. 327 yards, four touchdowns. Congratulations on a great day, Felipe. Thank you. Thank you. Guys. John, thank you so much. 12 months ago when I was out here during the spring, what are your thoughts? Chris, I haven't been here. the juice is back. Yeah. That's what it feels like. And I think a lot of people would agree that there was some juice missing. And we saw that during setting records. Four touchdown passes over 300 yards in the air. And uh, they got four months away from the opener against Miami and Orlando on August 24th on ESPN. Oh, no. uh, 
I've seen double coverage and triple coverage. We were there at quadruple coverage, and that would have been a fantastic Joshua connection. G missing his opportunity there. Well thrown football to end the game. Doesn't take advantage, unfortunately. 